Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching Nature Nell. And if you're new to my channel, thank you so much. Welcome aboard. You are gonna see what I got at this weekend's or this past weekend's orchid and plant show at Ophi's Festival down in Redland, Florida, which is our local summer, spring and summer orchid fairs that we have here uh, periodically. We're very, very, very lucky to have it. Very honored and very blessed. Um, who was it that was just saying it? Melissa. Melissa loves orchids. If you guys haven't seen her channel, she's brand new to the scene. She's super, super kind, very sweet lady. And um, she's kind of a goofball like me, so I immediately gravitate to that. You know, I don't like people that take themselves way too serious. <laughs> Life is just too serious already. <laughs> so, anyways, she was saying how blessed we are to have these, you know, like right at the corner of our of our house, pretty much. So I agree. I agree with her 100%. And so with that, I want to bring you guys a little something that I brought back. Now, I did only purchase one thing. The other things were gifts. You guys saw it on the videos when Mr. C from Sierra Madre sent me some or gave me some gifts that his wife sent to him to give me. So thank you, Susie, for those. I can't wait for them to bloom. I did mount one, but the other two I haven't mounted yet. I haven't decided how I'm going to mount them. So I will show you exactly how they look in the way they came in. So without further ado, let's go look at some blooms. All right, guys. Let's start right here at the entrance of my green space. And of course, I did get this beautiful, beautiful orchid. Now, I have to tag her. None of them had tags. At this moment right now, it's super early in the morning. I'm cleaning it up, my OCD. <laughs> She's almost on her way out. Um, I don't have the name on the top of my head. I can't. So, Colestes, blue Colestes sky, blue Colestes sky. Well, anyways, as always, right down here, I will put the name. But these were all over the fair. And what really caught my eye is that labellum. You know, that purple labellum. By the way, for newbies, this is called a labellum or a lip, orchid lip. So the labellum is so purpley that it's almost, it has a hue of blue. Now the phone does not capture it too well. The phone capture is mainly purple but it does have a slight hue of blue and this is what they consider the blue in the orchid world so when you see something that says blue or cerulea that's usually um i can't take that a little bit out but anyways this was 35 dollars. actually i paid i think 20 for it i got it at udeli's i got this at udeli's and um they sold it to me for 20 bucks but it's such a pretty, pretty flower. I, I should have gotten several more. Maybe uh, next show, if they have more of these, I'm going to get them. Because they're really pretty. And um, they had them in all different sorts of... Uh, I like this one because it was on a mount. They had them in baskets as well. But this, I could easily take the wire out. Now, I know some of you have asked me, how do I take an orchid out of a mount like this? Or out of a pot that has been so established let's say once this gets established it's going to wrap all its way around there is no way in this miracle planet <laughs> that you can do that <laughs> okay if it's wrapped around the pot it's done the only thing you can do it's either break the pot up into pieces you know you, i always wet the roots first that's a rule of thumb whenever you're going to handle roots wet them wet them and wet them for a long time till they're really soaked I do about a five minute run of soak, and then they're very pliable. See, right now they're green, so they're, they're still pliable, but you wanna see them super green, or as green as they can get, because sometimes roots do not go green. Like these don't really turn that green when I wet them. So just water them for five minutes, and then you can kind of move them around or break the pot. But me personally, like, okay, this one right here, I think it was this one, no, this one right here. Perfect example. Do you see that pot? There's no way I can pull all those roots out. I'm going to hurt this this cattleya. So I basically say, uh, fasten the pot to the bottom of this one. Let me show you. To the bottom of this one, like that. So there's no moving at all. Eventually, all these roots, as you can see, they're already moving out and finding more space. You see how it's already wrapping onto this? So eventually, that's all going to become one. And that's all you can do you put them in pots if you put them in mounts like this sometimes you can pull them out of the mount but guys don't overthink it i've done it several times before 
and my plants do great. It doesn't affect them. As you can see, this catlia is very healthy. So there's no, it's not gonna affect them. They don't even, I don't even think they know the difference to tell you the truth, whether you pull them out of that pot or not. I personally feel that if you pull them out of the pot, it's more stress, more unnecessary torture to the plant when you could just basically put it in another pot, fill it with medium, and she's gonna be as happy. Another one that I did that to was this in Greckham a long time ago. And look at this monster. Okay, hold on to me. And when I say monster, I mean in size. You know, I don't mean like ugly. <laughs> It's a real, it's probably one of my biggest plants that I have here as far as uh, orchids go. And this is a pot inside of a pot. And look, all these roots grew out and it's perfectly fine. So guys, again, if you need to know um, how to repot something and the roots are just way too, um, way too established, just pot in another pot the way it is. Now, this was one of the gifts from here I'm gonna show you the plant I have an idea I'm gonna show you the plant and then right there I'm gonna put the photo <laughs> because I have photos for all of them that's what this one is Sunbeam Juliet it does have um, right in there a bud about to come out now it does look like it's blasted in there from transportation so it may not it may not bloom so this one i'm actually going to uh, most probably put on a mount i'm not sure yet that's why i have it in here because i have to decide whether i want to put it on a mount or or in a pot because catlias here do very well in mounts in my space as you can see i have a lot of things here that are that are on mounts up here too they just do very well and i'm a heavy waterer so when i put things in pots you know i have to have a lot of drainage or i get in trouble <laughs> with over watering here is another beauty from sierra madre another wonderful gift from miss susie susie you're, you always spoil me <laughs> she's my orchid mom <laughs> all right let me see what this is because there was three of them. Oh, this is a Schomburgia mixed with um, with Catlia. This is really, really cool. There's a photo right next to it. This is such a cool combination. I think this one, uh, C told me that there was a gentleman that came to buy it. Um, and he told him that I had the last one. I'm like, great, create animosity. <laughs> From collector to other collector. And this has a, a little sheath in there as you can see so i'm being hopeful that it's soon to um to give me a nice nice bloom but the leaves look very good very healthy so i got these two and then the third one was this one here that i decided to immediately put on a mount hold on let me get you a tag first it's this oncidium guys look i'm gonna put the photo now i put it in this mount first because oncidiums do really really well in mounts here and just like this just dried no moss needed nothing because here it's just so humid in miami and look it's already it's already got this comes with this new little shoot there so anyways there's a photo it is absolutely beautiful guys I really, really love this Oncidium. It reminds me a little bit of the Giaho Queen. Giaho, I think that's how you say it, yeah. Oncidium. Um, very, very similar. Just a much bigger, bigger plant. And again, this is the name, in case you guys need it. Little Panda. People know it by Little Panda. All right, so those were my, my hauls from this weekend very tiny haul you know and I, I wasn't gonna really have a haul i i this was like peer pressure because teresita and roxy started saying get it get it because i told them i didn't have it so i was right by udeli's and i said you know what i did it more to help udeli's out <laughs> i'm like okay i'll get it <laughs> so um that was really my only purchase but um the fact that susie from sierra madre gave me those these three that was an extra added bonus i was so happy 
Hold on, let me put him here. Now, you know what? It's very, it's a very short video, so I'm not gonna make it like eight minutes. Let me show you guys something. Let me see if I have, I do have some new things opening like this one right here that just opened. I got this at Curl Smith. It's a super duper cute purple Vanda. I loved it because it's it was so the leaves are so tiny. I mean the leaves, the flowers. See? And they have such a beautiful, again, that bluish. Here, this is the name. Bangsai Blue Star Blue. Sorry. Vanda Bangsai Star Blue. And it does, it has on the edges, again, the camera doesn't pick it up, but it does have that kind of bluish, um, here we go, that looks better. Do you guys see around the edges a, a bluish uh, halo? Let me know how you see it on your side. Here I can kind of see it on my lens. It's very pretty and it does have a nice fragrance. And then right next to it, a new one that op just opened as well. You guys know what I feel about freckles. This one literally opened uh, in, on the top of the vandalier, the, uh, the vandalier I have in my yard. If you guys have seen my videos before, I hang them on this old chair frame and I hang it up. Maybe I'll show it to you before I close the channel. And um, this one I looked up, I go, oh my God, you're full of blooms. Let me take you down. I'm, not, I'm gonna miss them out. And this is, Vanda Burgundy, Burgundy Spotted with the cream base color. This one really didn't have a tag. That's my own tag to remind myself which one it is. But um, this one was also, which interesting enough, was also a gift by Sierra Madre. I got this about a year and a half ago and I was looking at it and he's like, here, just take it. <laughs> he gave it to me. So it was a really nice gift. Now let's see what else do I have in bloom that I have not shown. I don't, oh wait. Let me show you my update on the back plant. Look how beautiful, guys. She's going to give me a lot, a lot of blooms. Now, for you guys that are just tuning in for the first time, this is my bat flower plant. It's family to the yam plant. And it's a very exotic plant. It releases this gorgeous looking alien uh, flower where the seed pods are right in there, or should I say the seeds develop in there. And look, I have another one right here on this side. They're very unique looking, great profile too. It's almost like a jellyfish. And they start off very funky looking. See that little pod right here? That's how they start off. There's another one over there. And then they'll just shoot out. See, here's another one. They'll keep shooting out throughout the summer. There's another one back there about to open. But it is a very, very unique looking flower. It's probably one of my top favorite flowers here in the greenhouse. I always look forward to it every year. And it'll bloom again in, uh, in October during Halloween, which is very cool that it would bloom during uh, the Halloween festivities. Now this one's starting to open. It's another purple Vanda with a gorgeous, gorgeous detail. Here, let me get you the name. I had to redo the tag because as you can see, it just, it's a Vanda Banyong Sky Blue. And again, this was something that they consider in the orchid world the blue, you know, hue, even though the camera doesn't register. <laughs> By the way, do you guys remember the dendrobium that Jeremy over at SNW in Hawaii sent me as a gift on my two year anniversary? I mean, I'm saying, I, I, think it, I, I think this was a gift he just wanted to send me, but it just coincided with my anniversary. Yeah. Give you the name of the... Well, Jeremy in Hawaii has an amazing, amazing uh, nursery. One of the best nurseries I've seen, you know, on videos over there. And he grows all kinds of orchids, but he specializes on dendrobium. So if you guys want really cool dendrobiums, hit him up on Instagram. He usually does orders through Instagram in the direct messaging. 
and I mean he's got like really beautiful stuff but I just want to show you guys the quality of his orchids this is all brand new growth this wasn't here this these were tiny little little uh growth in the bottom when I received it all this was full of flowers well all this now is going to bloom next year and it has just as many canes as this gave so it's going to have the same amount of blooms and look at the health on that on that leaf how healthy that leaf is we have had some great rains here so that has helped a lot now i didn't show this before i cannot remember i don't know really the exact name of this nobody had the name it's i think an epidendrum uh it is a species and it grows in honduras i think it's a native to Honduras. Hold on, let me see if I can get you, because it's a very tiny, tiny flower. There we go. Whew, that's really blown up. I just thought it was so unique when I first saw it. I got this from Anna from Orchids uh, Blooming Paradise. Is it Blooming Paradise? I can't, I can, I mix all these names. But anyway, she had this at one of Ophi's fair. And I was so so curious about this little flower i thought it was just very unique so i bought it for 20 bucks and this is the first time it blooms for me i bought it blooming these were the old spikes hold on let me pull back here these were the old spikes and these are all new from this year i got this last year and this is what it looks like it's very gnarly looking <laughs> and very thin, hairy, like, um, roots. Let me see if anything around here. Oh, my ants are munching away. Now, some of you had asked me, let me see if I can grab them yet. See my ants eating away at the buffet? <laughs> That's okay, guys. I mean, they do, in some cases, they've been known to carry thrips on their backs. But, you know, I just can't. I can't start just killing these poor ants because they're eating. Now, I do spray my buds. I don't see it affecting the ants ever. Like, I don't find dead ants or I don't see them dying. They still go up to the sap. But I do spray it and I keep it from getting any thrips. But you guys have asked if, if it's bad for ants to be on your things. If that was the case, nothing here would bloom. Because every, every spike here is full of ants. And big ants, too. Now this is just starting to open my sea breeze. Check that out, how beautiful that looks. Ain't that a beauty? And she's gonna give me two more. There's two more right there. And I have a whole sheath ready to open. So it's gonna be a nice little show once it's all open. And it's, I could smell it from here. It smells so delicious. It has a very floral, soft floral, sweet fragrance. And the color is just beautiful. And you do see a little bit of that cerulea blue. Today's the blue special. <laughs> Without even me planning it that way. And look, remember what I told you about keeping your orchids or catpias on a mount? Look at the size of this. Now I did get a little, little weather. This is actually from all the rain we've had. We, we got way too much rain, but it has a lot of new growth. All on top, on the side, and it's adapted itself there very well. All right, guys, let me see. Oh, I cannot forget you, my beautiful Tolumnia, that you're starting to bloom very well. Now, I learned something about Tolumnias. I had built this a while ago, and unfortunately, it started dying away, and it's because I put spag moss. Tolumias like to be just like this, bare rooted. No spag moss whatsoever. Look how well this one's doing. I took all the moss out of this one and it's just thriving. And the other thing is it doesn't like to be wet all the time. Skip some days. You don't have to wet it every day. I basically don't wet this anymore. I wet back here and whatever sprinkles on here is more than enough. And it just pushed out this beautiful spike. It's, it's just starting to open. Now this is a Girac. Hold on, I keep my spike, my tags here in the back. That's what that is. And it 
has just such a pretty, this is the very first Tulumi I think I bought from Tang over at um, Springwater in an Ophi show. I just fell in love with the red. It's just so pretty. Tulumias are like the candy of the orchid world, right? They just look like candy. All right, my friends, I think I am gonna cut it here because everything else I've shown you before. Um, let me see what I have in my um, in my quick tent. This is for the newbies. This is what I have, um, or I have some of my more sensitive. I had to move my begonia here because it's just getting way too hot over at this greenhouse. We're now summer and um, my other begonia just melted away. So I had to put her away in rehabilitation. She'll come back, it's happened before. All right, let me see if I have anything here I have not shown you. Ah, I think I've shown you everything. Well, I've shown you this, but it was just starting to open. This is the dendrobium I bought at the Time Miami show that what caused a big, a big sensation. It's a dendrobium. I don't know if it's, I think it's bucko, right? Bucko, and there's uh, the hybrid. When I was walking around with this, it was blooming a little bit more than this, but look, it's gonna have, it's already opening here. Everybody was like, where did you get that? Where did you, there was the, this was the only one there. And believe it or not, I got it on Sunday. So, you know, don't give up hope. Oh, look, I got another shoot there. Now I got three, <gasps> four. So I got one, two, three, four. Yeah, she really likes it in here. And they do get a little bit of these like yellowing here and there. I've given up trying to like have the perfect orchid, you know, because I do keep them outdoors. When you keep your plants indoors, like in a lab style of, of environment, they do look prettier. The, the leaves are greener. They don't get the bugs that you get outdoors. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, there are there are things that are going to happen and you just got to accept them. Um, it's just nature. You know, if you look at videos of orchids out in nature, they look the same. They have dry leaves as well. It's not they're not pristine. <laughs> That's only in movies when you see plants that look all pristine. All right, guys, I don't really have anything. I've shown you all this. If you guys want to see the rest of these flowers, they are my last what's in bloom. So I'm not going to waste time here to show you something I've already shown you. Let's see. Now I'm going to I'm going to go all the way to the end here only because I always forget she's so far back here. I always buy from moats at the international show. One of my traditions have always been to buy their um, three for I think it's three for 50 or something like that. Um, Vandas. And I just want to show you how fun they are. This is the second time this blooms. I bought this at Tamiami from the moats. And look how pretty the flower is. Now the flower did get beat up with the rains uh, when it was a bud. So you see that? That's just weather beat up because she did bloom before and it was perfect. And all these heavy rains do cause a lot of damage on your flowers. Cause you know, orchids grow under big canopies. They're not used to getting drenched, you know, like heavy rains, but um, until they adapt. Now this is, Papillonanda, Dr. Benjamin Chu, and look what it has. It has the Papillonanda J uh, or Josephine Vambrero crossed with a Kowati fragrance. Now that is such a popular, popular orchid to mix with both of those. The JVB and the Kowati. Those two, they uh, the moats use a lot to mix with other orchids. So it's cool that they took the two most popular, or at least to me, because I've seen them popular uh, flowers and mix them together, which is these right here. It's already on its way out. There's one that's still fresh. This is a J, well, not really that fresh. This is a JVB. This is the actual uh, orchid that was used as a parent to that orchid I just showed you. And it was also used on this one, which again, I featured it on my last What's in Bloom, so I'm not gonna repeat it let me see if anything else here is new no 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 well, i'll just show you this again see she's 
completely opened. My most wonderful and beautiful Violetta. The Violetta from Banyong orchids. And this is their signature orchid over there. They always have billions of them. And what I love is that they're, they're always tweaking it, crossing this with that, and they're getting a bigger flower, a more fragrant flower. This is from the beginning. This is when, they, when I first saw them over at Banyong's, I got this. And this thing has grown, <laughs> it's so tall. It grew way up there. You see where that little cakey that came out right there? I had cut it, which is this piece right here. So imagine how tall this was. It just kept on going. And once it grew these roots down here, that's how you know that they're ready to cut. Once you see these aerial roots come out through the sides, you want to get like two or three really good, massive, thick roots like this. And then you cut it, cut it right there, bring it back down. And then when that gets roots, I'll do the same. And then I'll have something that looks like this. Now this one, because it's so heavy, it's pulled to the side, but it'll eventually just fill out like one big sphere. This is also from Bang Yang. This is a Ben's fragrance, uh, Ben's fantasy. All right, so that's my Violetta. One of my favorite smelling fragrances here. It smells really, really good. And they do last a long time. It's a beautiful, beautiful flower. All right, guys. Let's turn this puppy around. I don't think I have anything else to show you. Okay, guys, as always, I did forget. And two very important flowers, by the way. Thing is that when they're up here in the wall, I don't see them <laughs> when I'm videotaping. Or should I say I forget them? But this Cattleya Schilleriana hybrid, it's uh, with a uh, Brassia nodosa, blooms on and off throughout the year. But look what a pretty combination that is of that nice fuchsia pink against that pistachio green, yellowy green petal, and then that signature brassia, uh, brassavola or brassavola pat, um, shape of, of petals. I keep saying leaves. <laughs> and then that big labellum that you normally see in a Cattleya schilleriana. It's beautiful. It's such a pretty, pretty, pretty flower. And it's it's a happy color. Like when it blooms, it, it always looks so happy. And I keep her in there because she seems to really like that spot in there. You know, this wall seems to be like a perfect spot for a lot of, uh, of orchids. Like this amazing gift orchid given to me right in the beginning when I started recording my videos. This gentleman, Frank Vitier viewer of mine who's grown to be a friend and awesome person all around gifted me this epidendrum ciliare look at that how beautiful that flower is and guys it was in a he had given it to me in a pot and it was doing really really well but something happened that it started getting like root rot so i started losing a couple here and there I'll show you the residuals of that. See it in there? So I started freaking out and I said, oh my God, I cannot. This was the first gift I got of being a, a YouTuber and I'm already going to kill it. And it has more up there, by the way. Look. So all those are new growth after I decided to put it on a mount that I got over uh, purchase it. Actually, I think this was, uh, yeah, this was from the orchid supply store in Georgia from my friend Ken over there. And it took a while to kind of grab onto that mount, but then once it did, I saw the roots already sticking to the board and I'm like, okay, it's a done deal. And sure enough, a lot of new growth came out and it's looking beautiful. Look at that. But I, I had a scare there. I was like, no, <laughs> I love this. I don't want to lose it. It's such a cool flower. And I love that bird looking labellum that it has or throat. I don't even know what that is. But anyways, I forgot to mention those two. And these were two very important ones, especially this one, because it was such a great gift. And another thing I didn't mention when I went to Bang Yang, he had five of the large cones. You know how you guys have asked me 
uh, where I got the large cones at. Well, I get them at Bang Yang, but there is a disclaimer with a very big BUT. He only had these five on this size. And it just so happened that when I went this last time with Terry, I asked him, I'm like, come on, you got to order those extra large ones. He goes, you know, it's funny you should say that because I, I found five back there. Uh, they're cleaning out and, and renewing the whole place in the back, I guess. And he found five of these. He goes, I'm not going to sell them uh, out in public. I just have them back there taking up space. I'll let them go for 45 each if you take all five. <laughs> of course, that was a no brainer. So Terry took three and I took two. So I have this one and another one hanging over at the trees at uh, the mango tree that is actually very um very uh, uh very it's perfect for doing something like this so i may do a project very soon which is trying to figure out what orchid i'm going to put in there this poor plant you know she's another one that i'm i put here because in the pot she got she was one of the ones i got a really bad case of of um was those things millibugs and scales and i was on it but she's coming back she's doing really good i think that was the last of the yellow one everything else looks like it's gonna be fine so i'm always checking her out see these are old scales once you do this and they fall right off as they're dry there's nothing in there i really hit it so anyways i want you guys to help me out i want to use instead of doing something so big like this See, this is my Reconcilus one that looks beautiful when it's blooming. For you guys that are newbies, go back in my shorts. I have a posting of this in full bloom. And then I have this one that is the, um, the one I just did from Carl Smith, which is uh, Annie, Annie Bell. But anyways, you see how it sticks out a lot? I want something that is a little bit a little bit more compact and blooms a lot so if you guys have any ideas throw throw them out there for me i want to hear them all right now for real for real i think we're done <laughs> all right everyone that is it that is the end of today's show and tell <laughs> um i didn't have a lot to show you because I already did a what's in bloom literally like two videos ago so i pretty much covered everything so there's always something new popping up here and there in my in my greenhouse so i've shown you pretty much the new stuff so i hope you enjoyed it i know it wasn't as fun filled with blooms but there was enough to show <laughs> so anyways there's no shows uh coming up that i know of so i have no announcements um if you guys are putting a show together out there and you want me to announce it, please reach DM me and I will announce it, but do it ahead of time. Don't tell me the day before or the day because I have to do the videos. I have to edit them. It takes about four or five days for me to do all that. So give me at least at least two weeks of anticipation because that way I could put it on my list and and put it out there so other orchid collectors could be aware because how else will we find out, right? Word of mouth or through YouTube. So that is it. Let me see. I'm, I always look around to make sure there's nothing because the other day I closed up and I had forgotten to show you guys something. I was so angry, <laughs> but I think that's it. We're done. All right, guys, I will see you next time. I am Nelson. You've been watching Nature Nell. Remember to always, always keep it green. See you next time.